As I was working out in the weight room. <laughs> I'd like to thank you all for attending our monthly book club meeting. I hope you've all been reading the latest section, Birthday in the Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. You, Mr. Bala, start telling us a brief summary to refresh our memory. Well, during chapter 19, we can see that Fred awakens from her dreams of her daughter. As she is eating her breakfast, she is suddenly interrupted by a siren, and the red birth mobile arrives at her lodging. She is told Janine is giving birth to a baby. Brown sugar, all of it. <laughs> Get to the point, man. <laughs> uh -huh. So a banquet is prepared by the wives as Janine begins to give birth to a child. A friend begins to feel sympathetic witnessing the pain Janine experiences. Finally, a baby girl is conceived. Mm. So, is this, is this what happened in chapter 23, E10? Is this the end of the novel? <laughs> well, yes, this is actually, well, no, I mean, this is actually in the middle. Alfred returns back to the commander's house. Can we please talk about something relevant? <laughs> Chuckles, why don't you explain this character through the section? Well, in my in-depth analysis, I do happen to know there are ma many different characters in this portion of the novel. This would include Alfred, Janine, Moira, Commander Fred, Cora, and Lydia, the aunts, the wives, the handmaids. Charlie, what the matter with you, son? Did Jasmine tell you to say this? <laughs> No, but the main focus is the development of Alfred. Alfred does not develop drastically in this section, although she does develop here. She, although she does, she understands the change in role of woman better now, as seen from constant recounting of the past. You wanted a woman's culture. Well, now there is one. It isn't what you meant, but it exists in chapter 19, although. She thinks more about stronger women in this section, such as Mora in chapter 22, and her mom in chapter 20. This shows her constant thinking of past, and how, she, and how better off she was, and how she took advantage of her freedom and rights. Finally, Alfred starts to understand real emotions, especially in chapter 23, as these chapters highlight highly emotional times for women. The forbidden nature of the Scrabble game leads to to, uh, leads us to believe she might be thinking of trying to gain freedom once again and rebel similar to Moira when she says, I intend to get out of here. Define is not the same as explain, Charles. <laughs> the character development of Commander Fred is more important since he is a hard working man. Commander Fred is featured prominently in chapter 23. He plays a Scrabble game with Alfred when he says, you know how to play, on page 174. This shows human emotion developing once again in a world where physical interactions between men and women are reduced to forced sexual actions in order for reproduction. When the commander says, thank you for the game, kiss me, on page 175, <laughs> it shows the dilemma between the commander's thoughts and feelings. There is an irony present, as he is the one who helped create this dystopia to ensure the salvation of humankind. But here he is now, realize he is trapped just like the women of Gilead, with no emotion. Yes. Therefore, the development of emotion is surprising for the commander, as it shows that it is not his sex, the, the, the men only desire, but it shows that men can treat female properly, contrasting his previous appearance. <laughs> I disagree. This chapter focuses more on feminism and how non-existent it is in this society. Alfred never gets to... That's completely irrelevant. <laughs> Who cares about this woman stealing the jobs from us hard-working men? Isn't that right, Charlie? Uh, I, I think that's quite <laughs> debatable. <laughs> we focus on her character. Alfred is portrayed as a passive... <laughs> <laughs> Throughout the novel, she does not take on a heroic role, and here she remains solely as an observer when the events unfold. The key focus should be the tone and the atmosphere that is very nostalgic, which relates back to Alfred's childhood and her memories. I would use drab, flat, desensitized descriptions and words to reflect the uneventful. You are 100% incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> the tone begins with an S and ends with an AD. Sad? <laughs> oh, the Lord, dear Lord. <sighs> <sighs> it's better if you stop talking, man, <laughs> or people will start to think you're stupid. <laughs> okay. I think we're missing a member. 
You, Brian, have you been paying attention to your mind? Tell me the role of the baby. Does it symbolize fate? Does it symbolize life? <laughs> Level one, Mod. You're, you're, that's all you're gonna get. Come up to the front. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been reading the book, man? Yes. Tell me about the line, I could kill you, you know, that Moira says to Aunt Elizabeth on page 165 in chapter 22. What does that mean? This, this quote shows Moira's capability to protest, protest against the state. As the ants <laughs> continue to oppress the women in the Red Center, there's always hope. For Alfred, Moria gives her... Mo Mora gives her the hope for a better future because Mora did not easily give up after her attempted escape through pretending to be sick, mentioned in the previous section of the book. Contrast is shown through Aunt Elizabeth's close watching of the, of the handmaids in chapter 21 to Aunt Elizabeth's carelessness in stepping into Mora's trap in the washroom. Basically, from Alfred's mentioning of Mora and her courageous actions, Throughout the story, there's always a possibility for a better life, even when the women are oppressed. I wasn't talking to you. I was asking Brian, don't you keep quiet? The theme of women, <laughs> also known in this section as the handmaids, and the wives arrive at Cap Commander Warren's place to witness a, a Warren giving birth. Alfred talks about a Warren or Janine in chapter 19 that up in her room, all she does is breathe in and out and thinks of nothing. The handmaids in the novel are only useful if they can reproduce. And though Osprey's description of Janine, we understand that the women are easily oppressed into the state, that they do not rebel against and learn to adapt to the changes imposed in Gilead. Very intuitive. But the question is still directed towards Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Ethan, I think we should sim focus more on the symbols. The red birth moody, along with the red curtains and the red carpet, are important symbols in the novel. The red can symbolize the menstrual blood and menstrual fluid and blood, which are very apparent in this in the nat nativity scene. Also, the blood can represent murder of some sort, as a society could have dark sides to it, and murder <coughs> could have resulted. Furthermore, red is a symbol of patriotism and pride, as we see in many flags, such as Canada, the United States, and the United Kingdom. Lastly, red can be a symbol of evil and sins committed, as evil is often associated with, with murder and assault. Oh, and also the contrasting to the bir red birthmobile is the blue birthmobile that the wives get to ride. Blue is a symbol of opportunities, hope, and freedom. Again, using the flags we commonly see, the USA is a good example of using blue to portray freedom. The Scrabble game near the end of the chapter represents nostalgia, a reference to the present day. Perhaps it is a symbol on how their society has evolved as well, and something simply cannot be systematically and mechanically erased from one's mind. It also highlights the defining of rules, which forms the foundation for the remainder of the storyline. I think that because of Commander Fred's loneliness in Gilead, with too many rules to follow, he too, like Serena Joy, <coughs> secretly dislikes the state. However, as he was the one who helped to create the state, he could not blame anyone but himself. The only way he could come around it is through secretly meeting with Alfred, and more interestingly, it's his demand for Alfred to kiss him. This is important as it shows Commander Fred's weak side, that he is not the all-powerful man and sometimes just wants to <coughs> disregard all the rules founded on him. <sighs> This is your Mickey Mouse English ABCs. If I came in here and I couldn't recite my ABCs, you'd be disappointed too. What about the cushions, Mon? The cushions in page 136 of the book are important symbols in the section of The Handmaid's Tale. The, the, these are three, interestingly, three cushions. The number three is archetypally represent the unity of the mind, the body, the spirit. The three words on these cushions fit hope and charity also crucial in this section as they are references to the Roman Catholic religion. In fact, in Roman Catholicism, the three theological virtues are fit, hope, and charity. As a handmaid, 
Alfred has been denied hope and love and told to have fit, which suggests why the former two cushions are missing. Why can't you guys be more like Brian? So quiet and hardworking. <laughs> Also, the di as diligent symbol identifiers through high-level English A1, the eggs mentioned on page 137 can symbol symbolize rebirth, life, and given birth. It can, also, it can be seen as an allusion to the event to come, the birth of a newborn child. Birth. <laughs> Before we conclude this book club, is there anyone else who would like to speak? Eaten. <laughs> Let's not forget the status of the different women between the handmaids and the wives. In chapter 19, a friend says that there are no benches for them, the wives. They get real seats, showing the wives' superiority to them. As well, Martha's status is shown through Cora telling Alfred her simple desire for a little child to care for in chapter 23. It is important to know that the handmaids are sent away from the household after birth, and the baby is left to care by other members like the wife and the Marthas. Henry's job is only for reproduction and they could not live with the baby. Lastly, the status of the commander is shown in chapter 20 by Alfred's comment that the commander Warren is nowhere in sight during the birth and that he's celebrating with other men for the promotion that he would likely get. The commander the wife and the Marfas all get credit to live with the baby and benefit in their own ways, while the handmaids are shown to be the lowest in the household. <laughs> Is there anyone else who has anything else to say? <laughs> it's not about how many times you fall, but how you get back up. Rocky Balboa, <laughs> remember to read the next chapter after birthday. Night. Club dismissed. <laughs> right. Since you have nowhere else to go, you can stay at my house. We can make some vegan patties, watch Oprah, <laughs> make some presents, and send some mini emails. <laughs>